Hi, this is Caitlin from Get Over It. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know that there was some issues when we were recording this month's episode. So we ended up using a different method to record it. And unfortunately, the audio quality is not as good uh, as what we usually put out there. So I just want you to keep that in mind when you're listening to this episode. But I think the content is, is really good. So I didn't want to, you know, axe this episode. So anyway, here it is. And, you know, thank you very much for your understanding. Hello, everyone. I'm Sam. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Mo. And this is Team Get Over Yet. We're an all-female team participating in the greatest motoring adventure on the planet, the Mongol Rally. We'll be driving 10,000 miles across mountains, deserts, and unknown terrain. And along the way, we hope to spread our feminist and environmental ideals. Join us here as we share our stories, thoughts, and interviews as we get ready for the Mongol Rally 2021. Uh, don't you mean 2022? Shit! Good day, everyone, or good night, depending on where or where or when you're listening to this. I'm back this month, and this time I'm going to interview a very special friend of mine that I met while I was in Korea. Uh, Mo, unfortunately, is not here today. She got stuck at work, so it's just me, Caitlin, who's doing the interview today. But this friend is also our friend, so... We met this friend through our hiking group, and we did quite a bit of adventuring, traveling, and, of course, drinking together. Ah, those were the days. But so recently, this friend did some pretty extensive traveling with her partner, and in order to complement our previous episode on the 1908 Paris to New York race, I thought it would be nice to interview her about her trip. So without further ado, please give a warm welcome to our friend, my friend, Devin! Yay! Hello! <laughs> so, Devin, hi. Devin, could you introduce yourself to our listeners, please? Okay. Uh, so, my name is Devin Messikar, and I have lived all over the world. Um, and I think one of my treasures was living in Korea and doing all the hiking and experiencing experiences there. Um, but I'm originally from New York, and I currently live in Colorado Springs. Um, I love to travel in all forms. Um, recently, I've been doing a lot of traveling in a van. <laughs> um, and I am in the Space Force. Wow! Yeah, so exciting. <laughs> yeah, before we started recording this, this episode, we were talking about the Space Force, and uh, you're doing some really interesting work over there. That's so cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's, it's one of the things that I love about being able to touch into my creative side because um, the job that I have is a lot of prototyping and looking at new technology. And so it keeps my brain cells <laughs> occupied. Mm. Um, and I think uh, it's it's something that I was actually a- able to apply to uh, my van design uh, when we were trying to figure oh. out what were the, the minimum necessities that we needed to have a really good time traveling in a van. Wow. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even put those two together when we were talking earlier. But yeah, that would be really helpful. (laughs) That's pretty cool. (laughs) So I guess like so getting into our questions today, the first one, I guess I want to ask you, like, how long was your trip? Because I think you were traveling for quite a while. And then what was your inspiration for the trip that you took? Um, So I will say that I've I've been traveling quite a bit because I've also been moving quite a bit. And so Mm -hmm. Um, with my job, I had the opportunity to move um, to Alabama and then from Alabama out to Colorado. So I leveraged those moves to really do a lot of my traveling. Um, we went, we took the van. Uh, well, I'll, I'll start with this. When we were living in Alabama, we actually lived at a campground. Okay. In <laughs> nice. That was that was like the first like big trip um, that was, you know, not like typical going to a hotel or a house or whatever. And so mm-hmm. we bought a travel trailer and we uh, moved to a campground in Alabama. And while I was going to school, that's where we lived. And we enjoyed the 250 square feet so much that we <laughs> decided, why not go smaller? <laughs> and, yes. 
And I watched a lot of the, you know, the van life YouTube videos and stuff like that. And I got really excited about like the cool things that I could do in a van. And, uh, you know, there were a couple episodes out there that were like, okay, you know, take a van and just try it out. And so I found one for sale that was, you know, fairly inexpensive. And I was like, let's do it. And so uh, about a, a little over a year ago now, we bought our first van And uh, the first couple of trips we did, we went up to New York State Mm. uh, with the van. And uh, it was it was fun because it was just like we could stop anywhere we wanted. Um, Mm. We had a bed in the back. (laughs) And um, then we also took it down to uh, Mobile, Alabama and did some hiking down there. Um, And we're there for like the Mardi Mardi Gras time frame. Uh, we went out to, uh, let's see, we, we did cross country all the way to Colorado twice, I think. So we did, you know, Texas and Oklahoma. Uh, we did Arkansas, uh, then Oklahoma, uh, like the second time. And then we went all over, uh, Colorado Springs in the Denver area. So a little bit of everything, <laughs> but oh. it's been, it's been a good experience. I mean, it, but like I said, it was really just leveraging the, the moves that we had coming up to kind of do our trips. Yeah. That's cool that you're able to kind of like integrate it like that. Those are always the best things. Like whenever you just like seize an opportunity, it's like, okay, let's go. (laughs) I like that. I did, I did that before, like before I came to Korea, I had like, you know, I just didn't have a job. Like I quit my job and I had to get rid of all my stuff anyway, because I was like moving across the world and, but I still had my car. And then at that point I was like, Oh, road trip time. (laughs) You know, wow. I did that when I left Korea. I actually did that. I um I went to uh, six countries in like five weeks. Nice. And I was all by myself, but I kept meeting up with different people. Like in Singapore, I met up with a couple of girlfriends, you know, anecdotally, like one from the UK, one was from Korea. Oh, and then there was another girlfriend that from Massachusetts that were all living in Singapore. I was like, how fortuitous is this? Yeah, wow. <laughs> and, yeah, and in Taiwan it was the same thing. It was the Chinese New Year, but I had um a colleague that I worked with in the army and he uh his wife is from there and so I stayed with their family and we did oh, all nice. like you know, like envelopes with cash in them and <laughs> put them under each other's pillow or whatever, exchanged them. So it was, you know, it was a really rewarding experience and then uh a buddy of mine from a previous deployment we ended up meeting up in Hong Kong, and then uh, I traveled with him and his girlfriend at the time, now wife, oh. uh, to Vietnam, and we went on, like, a boat trip. <laughs> so, oh, nice. Yeah, so I, I like to leverage the moves. So, like, when I was moving from Korea to D.C., that was the perfect time to do it, and so that's what I try to do. Yeah, for sure. Nobody, and I think Nobody misses me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, like, that's kind of I – mean, I mean, you probably have more connections than I do, but, like, that's kind of the benefit – the benefit or the reward, I guess, for being more like a, a worldly person is that you sort you like, I mean, you make all these friendships and connections and stuff. And like, thanks to the internet, we can all keep in touch. Yeah. yeah it's I pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah. And then you're just like in a country and you're like, Oh, Hey, wait, so-and-so lives here. Don't they? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Put the message on Facebook. They're like, I'm coming to X country. Who is there? <laughs> Somebody, Somebody will is. pick it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's so amazing. Okay. So and you kind of already mentioned like the places that you went to, but oh, I did. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's no problem. Uh, but I want to know what was kind of the highlight of the trip. If you have to pick out like one experience, what would it be? Oh, okay. Um, let's see. So my my well, my go to for this answer for always highlights is always food. Ah, <laughs> oh, food is good. Yeah. So, um, in every time you go someplace new, you get to try like new food and, and new things. And I think, um, being able to like travel around in the van, we could go to some of these obscure places and we didn't have to worry about, you know, getting back to our hotel because the real highlight is being able to stay wherever you end up. Nice. I am, um, I know a lot of people travel with like agendas and itineraries and stuff like that. I am not that. I'm I'm not the checklist girl either. I love to just wander. And Mm. so the van really affords me to do a whole lot of wandering a lot quicker (laughs) than being on my feet. 
And um, I think what I like most is that I can just end up in any one spot and, you know, take detours. If I see something exciting, like we were, um, you know, there's a few different ways to go from Alabama to Colorado. Mm -hmm. And at one point we drove through the panhandle and I was like, and, and part of the reason was because I was like, oh, that's cool. I want to drive through that little panhandle. It's nice and skinny. It seems cool. Um, and there was a restaurant that I wanted to try there uh, yeah. <laughs> that, had, that had really great reviews. And so this was actually, um, this was more of the official move, but it was still really fun because my mom was with us oh, and nice. my husband, my husband, we were actually caravanning my, we had my car, the van and the truck <laughs> taking everything. And so, um, we ended up stopping at this wonderful restaurant. And it uh, it was it was like somebody's house and like literally one of the windows would open up and like people would drive up to like a regular house window, not like <laughs> like a drive through window, but cool. somebody's house window and like place orders and stuff like that and pick it up from the window. But inside, it looked like you were walking into somebody's like oversized living room and like mm. the back area was all kitchen. So they like knocked out a couple of walls, just this little tiny house and they were nice. serving some of the best Mexican food I've ever had. <laughs> Those are the best kind of places to be, like, for real. Yeah. 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 yeah I think it was the only restaurant in that entire town. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I keep yeah. forgetting. Yeah, because, like, living in Korea, I mean, I mean, there are small towns in Korea, but, I mean, the, the population density is so high here that you're really not that far away from a, from a decent-sized city at any given time. So I kind of I kind of forget about that rural charm oh yeah well and you know you could tell all the locals were going there too you know you know mm. guys were throwing up in their hard hats and their like fluorescent vests and stuff I'm like oh it's like he works he's working on the road around the corner here oh yeah this, like his hot spot you know and like tons of people are getting takeout and stuff like that and i was like you know and i just i like that sort of um opportunity to just kind of stay wherever you go and find new places and be able to wander yeah, I agree. <laughs> I talk to a lot of my students are like that because I think well, and, and that's fair too. Because I mean, if you're if you're not a native English speaker, then sometimes it's kind of hard to get around. So, a lot of my yeah. students often like talk about making trips, and they have like every hour of every day planned. And it, I just uh, I understand the necessity for it sometimes, but at the same time, yeah. like I, I'm with you. Like that's just not my it's not my scene, I guess. Well, okay. So I'll, I'll say this. So I had like mm -hmm. a weird experience when I went, to, this was a, a year ago or, or a couple of years ago, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, when I ended up in Hanoi in Vietnam, it, mm -hmm. I didn't have anything on the itinerary. We were going on a boat trip. That's the only thing I had. And I just wandered around the city. And so two fun things happened because I was wandering. One is they had, uh, you know, like a little like uh, courtyard area where they were renting out rollerblades. Oh, fun. <laughs> and you could just rollerblade around the courtyard area. And, you know, of course, like the guys renting out the rollerblades are very good, you oh, know. Yeah. And, but, but I also used to figure skate. So I was like, oh, also yeah. very good. And they were like really impressed. <laughs> and I loved that. But it was like, you know, they were like excited to talk to me and like ask me things. And like, how do, how do you know how to rollerblade? Do you have rollerblades? How old are you? You know, all the English questions that they knew. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it was nice because I felt like I had the opportunity to talk with locals, you know, on their scene and just, you know, kind of enjoy their company a little bit. And and that was part, you know, those are happy accidents that happen when you're wandering and you're not planning things. Because that wasn't on a, you know, on any of the websites like you can rent rollerblades here. <laughs> yeah. You know, just a couple of people trying to get make a living. Um, and the other funny thing that happened was I had to exchange money. I only mm -hmm. had Korean money left and uh, nobody would take Korean money. And I no. was like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm moving. I got to get rid of this Korean money. And so, like, I had a heck of a time trying to find a place to exchange Korean money. But one of the guys who has those little carts that they drive around that you sit in the back of, he's like, yeah. I know a bank that'll do it. I was like, <gasps> oh, this, seems, this seems slightly shady, but I'm <laughs> I'm on board. And so he took me on a big tour around town. And, you know, I gave him some good money. And then he found a bank for me, no kidding, that would ex finally exchange it. And I had already put, like, five miles on my feet. I was like, 
I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I was like, I just need to, my, I just need to exchange this Korean money for something else. <laughs> and so they were able to help me and it was, it was awesome. Happy accidents. Those things don't happen if you have everything planned out. So that's so true. That's so fun. Okay. And then, so if that's a highlight, then what was the biggest challenge? All right. So uh, I was thinking about this a little bit. Um, I think there were two large challenges. Um, one is we don't have a bathroom in the van. <laughs> oh. <gasps> yeah, that's a, that's a big one. <laughs> <laughs> so in, um, I don't know if this is normal for people, but I have to go to the bathroom sometimes in the middle of the night. Like, yeah. is, is that that normal? Maybe I just, I'm just very well hydrated. Yeah, me, me, too, um, me too. Usually, <laughs> like through, about between one thirty a.m. and three a.m., I usually have to go. Yeah, 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 and that's not ideal for being outside of the dark in a place you don't know. Right. <laughs> I am excited to try a little bit more uh, places that you know, uh, you know, we're at like the ends of trailheads or something like that. But I really want mm-hmm. to put at least a, a small disc toilet in the van if I do that. Um, because just wandering out into the woods seems like a, a bad idea if it's not a campground. I don't know, maybe. So we spent a lot of nights at like, uh, you know, well-lit player areas where most people spend nights in the cars, you know, like yeah, even, even truck stops or Walmart parking lots or stuff like that. And it was just from a safety perspective, but also as right. a, a bathroom to use. And then the other uh, challenge with, like traveling in a van for me was figuring out what was the most comfortable to sleep. Cause you know, when you're traveling in a van, like you get up in the morning, you're going to have to drive the next day. So it's not like you can, mm. you know, stumble around. You really need to have like a, a decent place to sleep and um, figuring out like comfort level. So we had like really thin mattresses at first and it's a, the way that I built it. So Um, We took out all the seats in the back, and it used to be, um, like, the metal bench, and we took the cushions off, and I actually put planks of wood on it so that you could actually put the bench down, but you can set it up, and it looks like a like a oversized chair that you can sit in. <laughs> <laughs> and I flipped it around so like you can actually look out the back, which I did a couple of times when oh. I was working. Like I took the 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 van to the river, <laughs> and oh, I yeah. opened and I opened up the back, and I could hear like the the water rolling in the background while I was working on my computer, and it was really nice because the bench was facing the other way. Mm. Um. But I had to go to, like, uh, one of the fabric stores and get some, like, thicker cushions because the little, like, two inches were just not cutting it. Yeah. It's very stiff. <laughs> so, you know, there were a couple of, like, lessons learned. And I and I think that's true, too. You know, when they were talking on, like, those fan life things, they were like, oh, you can't always want to just deck it out because you don't know what you're going to want. So these people spend, like, like, crazy amounts of money. I think mm. we spent, like, maybe a couple hundred bucks to, to do our That's not but fun. yeah it, but people tend to spend crazy amounts of money um mm. and then they realize that it's not something that they like or something that they don't want and so mm. we were kind of working through that uh on a budget and so like i have a super i have a three inch foam pad on top of these four inch like sturdy foams it feels like you're in bed it's really oh, nice, nice actually and then uh we packed some nice pillows and then uh there were a couple of times we traveled like in the winter and it got pretty cold in there. Mm. And so we ended up um, having his and her sleeping bags <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> that actually zipped together too. So it was a lot warmer. So you're like, you can cocoon yourself if you're traveling by, by yourself or we ha- could cocoon each other, <laughs> oh, nice. which was romantic, I guess. <laughs> But that was a Christmas gift. And so that was that was like the perfect Christmas gift last year. So we could um, do a little bit more traveling as it got colder. Surprisingly, Mobile, Alabama gets really cold even in March. (laughs) They had they had freezing temperatures and and stuff like that. When we were down there, I was like, what is this? I thought Alabama was warm. (laughs) So those were a couple of like the big travel challenges that we ran into. But nothing, nothing crazy. Hmm. Yeah, I've definitely I've definitely seen a couple of videos too where people have like it's it's not so much a van, it's more like a home on wheels. But <laughs> but for me, like I always <laughs> I like to do like the bare minimum and I'm pretty comfortable with that. 
So yeah. I think I'd probably be like around the same level as you, like ah, mattress, some pillows, good sleeping bag. That's enough. <laughs> That's all you need. It really did. It worked out great. And mm-hmm. and I love the construction side of it. And so um, even even on the door, I built like a little uh, like shelf. Oh, nice. and um, you can actually put like your little because when you open up the door, it bumps up to the side of the van. It's not one of those sliding doors. It's like mm-hmm. regular open door. Okay. And then you could actually put the um your like your stove or whatever on the shelf and and oh. do some cooking outside. And so I really wanted some like there was like basic things like okay these are like my criteria for me to be comfortable and happy. Mm-hmm. Um, the next is the toilet, but <laughs> I can dream. <laughs> I oh yeah, and that reminds me because I was gonna say I went camping a while ago and I saw these people they had it they had their own toilet. Um, but okay, so it was like a it was something that you could collapse I guess and make smaller but like you know those changing tents at the beach sometimes they have yeah it was something like that it was just like a little like stand-up tent that was like big enough for one person to get in and then they had just like a little like seat toilet with like sort of like a container on the bottom of it so you could just like go in and then like do your business and then when you were finished you could like seal or empty the container I've seen those and I think that's more of like what I'm looking for just something Mm -hmm. to like get me through the night and yeah you know because Most of the trips um, that we did were, you know, at most like four days. I mean, this is this is a van you're traveling around in. So, you know, um, we spent more time there. It's really for us. It was more for like weekend trips. We didn't want a big thing that we were going to haul. And um, then you have to have a truck to haul it. Or, you know, a, a, you know, one of the, the bigger buses and, and other things, then you have to worry about where you're parking and stuff like that. So having a small van, we can go pretty much anywhere. We can park anywhere like normal. It's been our v, a VIP, you know, of all the places that I've been. I've also been to Home Depot a lot. Okay. <laughs> so having the van has been really um, kind of our MVP of vehicles, uh, mm. just getting around and because it can kind of go anywhere. Yeah, when I was when I was a kid I, I pretty much exclusively drove vans. <laughs> My mom kept buying vans. But they're com- <laughs> well they're comfortable and yeah. like I and I remember uh, a couple of times like I, I helped my friends and my sister move apartments and stuff and we would be able to well we'd have to like Tetris it a little bit but we'd be able to fit like most of their furniture like in one go. So yeah, it's pretty interesting. Like they're the, useful. And the cargo vans are, are super popular nowadays. And mm. uh, maybe maybe I'm more attuned to them because I'm like, oh, I, I bet I could outrig that with, you know, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> I start thinking of ideas like how to improve their van <laughs> with yeah. the living space. Um, yeah. But I think that's what I like the most is uh, it's just the, the versatility of it. And yeah. ours is a club wagon. So, like, when we bought it, it was like a it was like a Florida beach van you know, with like a hundred thousand miles on it. And it had like shades that come down. Oh, nice. Oh, the shades. On the window. That's a good one. Yes. It has these like tan shades that come down, which is kind of nice because like when you're in a well lit area, you can darken it up a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can see in, you know, nothing. Yeah. You see? Oh, that's really cool. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of hankering to, for a van. I think that'd be like the perfect thing. If I came back to Korea, I would totally bring a van with me. <laughs> All right. So then, ah, but this one, so, you know, we're kind of a, a bit of a feminist organization over here. So my question, next question is, is along those lines. So, but were there any experiences during the trip that made you feel more conscious of being a woman? So like kind of good or bad experiences, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, I think I'm always aware, more aware of my surroundings, especially when I'm traveling by myself. Right. Um, which, you know, maybe I should be more aware when I'm traveling with my husband, too, because, you know, anything can happen. Mm. Um, but uh, I get a little lackadaisical when he's around. I was like, oh, maybe he'll notice, you know, the weird <laughs> guy behind the trash can waiting for you to go to sleep. In your van. <laughs> mm. okay. um, but no, I think it's um, I think that's probably in part why I haven't really ventured truly off the beaten path um, to stay places. And I know a lot of people do that. Um, but I'm, um, I'm pretty cautious when I'm traveling. I try to be aware of my surroundings because, uh, I'm a bit of a klutz and a hot mess anyway. And so something is going to go wrong. I just don't want it to be one of those things. Mm. So I try to put myself in situations 
that keep me the safest possible or at least give me a, an avenue to react appropriately, I guess. You know, like if I'm staying in a well-lit area and something were to happen, I can't always avoid it. You know, I can make sure my car is locked and I can make sure that I have I sleep with the phone next to my bed. There's, you know, there's limitations. Mm-hmm. Um, but I actually sleep really soundly in the van. So, oh, okay. I, you know, for good, for better or worse, <laughs> I have a great night's sleep. Like, I wake up, like, really early. You know, I feel, you know, like, well, you think of, like, farmers waking up at, like, 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. Like, I'm I'm up at 5, like, ready to go. But I nice. also think it's kind of exciting. And, um, you know, and it, it, it's cozy. And I, and I like, you know, it, it being able to um, just be in areas and feel safe has been probably the most important thing that I've been aware of um, as I've traveled lately. Mm-hmm. Um, and now that we're in Colorado, I'm hoping to do more more trips um, to like trailheads and stuff like that and stay there overnight. Um, I'm, I'm dying to take the van skiing, but I'm mm-hmm. a little nervous about it. <laughs> um, mostly because of the cold. Right. Uh, yeah. But also I don't want to get stuck anywhere. <laughs> also true. Yeah, so uh I actually I have a I have a a guy that sells these Japanese four-wheel drive vans that actually have a stick shift on the other side, right? Cuz it's a right-hand oh, drive yes. as you right. shift with your left hand. And I'm like, "Oh, that's so cool." I was like, "I wonder if I could do that." <laughs> so I I'm I and they're a little bit smaller than mine. Mm-hmm. Cuz I have a, a Ford Econoline club wagon. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, and it's, it's gasoline and it's actually only two wheel drive, but it's, it's a beast anyway. Yeah. My, but, my dad had one. My dad had a Ford Econoline and it was like, but it was from yeah. the sixties. It was an old school boy. <laughs> it was, but it had like shag carpeting on the interior and it had yeah. like an awning on the outside, but it was a dope van. It was pretty great. Honestly, this van is super cool, um, and it, it, it's probably great for a beach van, but now that we're in the mountains, I need something that's a little bit more, uh, has a little bit more gusto for going up the hills and mm. for driving through the snow, mm-hmm. and so I think I'm going to upgrade, and then I'll feel a little bit more comfortable. At least that's that's in my purview, but, you know, starting with a fairly inexpensive van, it kind of afforded me to figure out what what style of van I, I should go for next. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, that's that's kind of what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I feel like uh, uh, I think you're, you do better than me because, like, <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I've been so spoiled. Well, that's not. No, I've been pretty much spoiled my whole life because I've always basically lived in areas that were like pretty safe. So, yeah. I mean, I I know what I should be doing. Like, I know I should be more cautious, but at the same time, I'm just like not. And especially if I'm enjoying myself, I'm just like, la, la, la. And I'm like totally immersed, like in my own world, I guess, of like having fun that I just don't really pay attention to what's going on around me. And then like a lot of times, because I'll go camping, like I'll go traveling and camping and stuff by myself. And, you know, like my, I just have like a little tiny tent and it's, you know, very thin and very easy for someone to just kind of like open it and like kidnap me or something, I guess. <laughs> but, but for some reason, it's, but it, it just never occurs to me usually like while I'm, I'm doing that, that it's going to happen. And it's kind of funny because a lot of um, like, I'll talk to my students about like different trips and camping trips and stuff that I've done. And they're just like, aren't you scared? Is that okay? And I'm like, what, why would I be scared? <laughs> I don't know that I'm scared. I'm just cautious. It, yeah. And, like, right. As soon as I lay down, I'm like, good. I was like, if something's going to happen, it's going to happen. And I've actually thought about this. I was like, if somebody comes in here, then what am I going to do? I was like, I'm going to deck them. <laughs> there you they go. won't know what hit them. And, <laughs> uh, you know, like, like, I, you know, they talk about fight or flight. I'm totally a fighter. <laughs> if anything were to go down, I feel like I would, I would definitely fight back. Yeah. I hope I hope I would. I you know, I you just you never know until it really happens. Um the other thing was, you know, coming from Korea and like moving back to the States, Korea always felt so safe. Like in right. a in a in a super weird and wonderful way. I I felt some uh, the most safe I've ever felt in my life in Korea. And I also probably got the most texts from my family about what's going on in North Korea. And (laughs) I was was like, what do you mean? We're at the bar. We're drinking. (laughs) What happened in North Korea? Um, I mean, 
you know, it was just, a, it was a, it was a totally different environment. Um, it, you know, and, and there's so many great stories uh, of being in Korea. That's why I would lo- actually love to go back with like a camper van and, oh, and yeah. really travel more around the country, you know, instead of taking that, you know, bus ride at 11 at night and yep. then showing up at like two in the morning at the mountain for that sunrise hike. What if yeah. you could just go the night before and sleep there? <laughs> So nice, that's great. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I mean, and I and I really loved traveling around, um, like the Korean uh, mountain sides and the hikes, and there was just so much to do and the beaches. Mm. It's a, it's a, it really is a beautiful country. Yeah, and and I feel like you you get so much diversity just in that small country. You know, and sometimes I wish I had a vehicle there, but I did really good without a vehicle for a couple mm. of years. But like if I if I went back, I would take my van with me, Sometimes, my little van, the bed in the back. <laughs> yeah, the public transportation is pretty good. I I recent well, because I, I got my license exchanged because my Canadian license was expiring, so I just exchanged it for a Korean one, and then I finally used it like a f- few months ago. I t- me and a friend went down to Tongyeong, so it was my first experience driving in Korea, and it was like it was fine. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's really not that hard. Time. Had it been a long time since you drove last? Uh, since I drove a car, because yeah. yeah, since I since I came here, I drove those like little scooters a couple times. But okay. the scooters are definitely. I would love to have, especially in Korea. I think like having a motorcycle would be pretty good because then you can weave through traffic and then you kind of escape those big traffic jams and stuff. Yeah, yeah no, that's what I, I, want. I totally understand. It was kind of funny actually, like. Uh, when I was in Korea, I, I didn't drive at all for the first year. I mean, not a scooter, mm-hmm. not a not a vehicle, nothing mm-hmm. for over 400 days. And I think we had a work trip to Hawaii. And so I show up in Hawaii and I have to pick up my boss from the airport. Oh, OK. And I haven't driven in over 400 days and I don't really know the, the my way around. And mm-hmm. so. Of course, it's like a two-star general, so I, like, hand him my phone. I was like, sure, you want to navigate? I was like, I haven't, I haven't driven in over 400 days. And he just kind of looked at me. He's like, yeah, of course I'll navigate. <laughs> Those are, like, the moments I was like, oh, my God. I was like, I can't believe Like, and I didn't miss it. It was, like, the weirdest thing, and I love driving. I have oh, a too. car here, too, and I, I like to drive um, fast, the speed limit. <laughs> more or less <laughs> and uh just you know like i like being out on the open road and like if i was a kid growing up getting your license was your freedom yeah exactly so, same and that's really translated a lot so i was always surprised in korea how how i how i didn't miss the driving which mm. is kind of- yeah because i mean like we well, yeah, public transportation here is so good but it is really nice to have a car. Like when we went to Tongyeong, it was just like, oh, where do you want to go? And then we could just like easily go anywhere. Like we went to like the, uh, we went to like a kind of museum and we saw like, well, another museum and we like walked around and we went to different parks and different restaurants. And it was just like, what should we do? And it was just so easy. And I was like, oh, cars are so nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there's a couple of places that I didn't visit because it was still a little unusual to get there without right. a- and so I, I hear you on that one. Maybe I'll go back to Korea one day. <laughs> <gasps> that sounds good. Yeah, I should. I should do another trip. Maybe in the spring, I'll like rent a car again and go camping somewhere. In, in Korea, I see a lot of pictures of people doing like camping on their roofs. Have you seen? Oh, that? yeah, a little they bit. Have, like, I, like tents or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I yeah on top of their cars. You mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I think that would be pretty awesome, actually. That would be pretty good. I'd be into it. You just like get like a little rack, I guess, and then put like a board on it, and then you could just like stick a tent up there. Yeah, I think they have like specialty things for that too. But, I mean, mm. as long as you're not afraid of bunk beds, you could probably be okay. <laughs> yeah, well, I'd imagine. Cool, well, because like, okay, so I, a few years ago, I did this like solo bike trip around Jeju. So I was there oh. for like yeah six days or something, um, and I would just like I would just bike to a campsite and then just like set up my tent, but. Most of the time when I set up my tent somewhere, I ended up, like, on top of an ant's nest. So I, like, wake up covered in ants. Oh, it was awful. Right. You need a little van to take you around. <laughs> right, yeah. Or, like, a, or just, like, sleep on top of the van and avoid the ants. And, yeah. Oh, well, awful. and I, th- I also see. 
think it was a compromise. Like uh, my my husband uh, and I have done regular camping plenty of times, mm -hmm. um, and he is not a fan. He he oh. is more more of a glamper. Oh. Um, yeah, like cabiner. He likes the cabin. This is a good balance for us because I don't I love camping, but yeah, me too. Uh, you know, and I like to be places where I don't I'm not going to the cabin. I'm just going to the spot, mm. and I do that with the van almost as much as I could do it with a tent. Almost. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, so I like that option and it's, it's, it's good for our marriage. Oh, good. <laughs> Cause he gets, he doesn't sleep so well on the, uh, you know, the hard ground and then he's cranky the next day and nobody um, wants that. I don't know. Hard ground doesn't bother. Well, I mean, I, I'm sure like after a few days it would bother me, but like if it's just like a, a weekend or like three or four days or something, I'm usually pretty okay with it. And I bought this like, it was pretty cheap, and I bought, like, one of those little, like, the little blow-up maps, or map maps, mats. Yeah. Yeah, just for, like, just for one those person. Great. It's great, yeah. Um, I actually have one. It has, like, different cutouts, so it it supports just the areas that you're needed, so it can ah. flex down even smaller. I love oh, nice. that. that was, for me, that was just enough. And, actually, it was less for the hard ground and more for the cold. Yes, it right, because it's kind of insulating. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. So I like that. Actually, and I can pretty much sleep anywhere. I mean, you've been to Jim Jabon's probably plenty oh, yeah. of times. Yeah. And so anytime I would go to like a Korean spa, I was fine sleeping there. I could sleep on, you know, the, the mat or nothing with the heated floor as I was like in my own little heaven. And um, the, I think we went on a trip once where, you know, we left at 11 o'clock at night mm -hmm. and then we stopped at a Jim Jabon to like shower and take a, like a, a, you know, more restful nap before we did the hike the next day. Oh, nice. And uh, nobody else on the bus slept except me. I had my hand in my pocket like I was under the covers. Nice. <laughs> and I was like zonked out, probably snoring, but just having a, a great sleep because I can I can pretty much do it anywhere. So That's good. Yeah, me too. As long as I'm laying down, I'm all right. Sitting up, I yeah. can't fall asleep, but laying down, I can. No problem. Yeah. Well, my husband makes fun of me because I, I actually sleep without a pillow, which is... Oh weird yeah rare <laughs> yeah and it's like arms above my head <laughs> no mm. pillow um and so sleeping in the van i'm a super minimalist um yeah. having, the, having the sleeping bag is like like luxury to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay and then uh i guess the so, so last well second to last question i guess is what is your main takeaway from all of this traveling uh, that's, that's really that I need to upgrade okay. my, my, my home on wheels. <laughs> so, you know, and, and that was kind of the, the perspective I had was that this was a temporary thing to see what I liked and what I didn't like. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but I have realized that I am a, a van lady, not like a mini van lady, but like a cargo van that I can outrig. And, and I think it's more, uh, that I love the construction side of it. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just from trips in general, I mean, for me, my main takeaway from any trip is uh, when can I come back and where can I go next? Mm. I, it's like it's, I there are so many places that I miss uh, because I, you know, I've been there once or something like that. And, and that was part of the reason, like, I love to being I like to travel to places that I'm going to spend a long time in. Like, I like yes. being in Korea because I felt like I could. I could take my time wandering around the country. I wasn't just coming in and hitting the hotspot. Being able to travel in a van, I can, those places that you pass through, mm -hmm. I can actually stay there for a little bit longer. And that's the part that I like. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think like, you know, I, I came, I came to Korea with the intention of staying. Actually, I didn't have any intentions. And I think that's kind of the best thing. Like you just go somewhere and you're just like, ah, we'll see how it goes. Uh, and like now I'm considering going to Australia and like definitely at least, like I feel like if you're going to go anywhere and you want to actually experience it, you have to go for at least like a year. <laughs> no, true. So yeah. true. And, and honestly, part of what I loved and probably why I've stayed in the military is that they they're like, hey, you're going here next. And I'm like, well, I've never thought about moving to Korea or Colorado or Alabama. And I was like, sure, why not? <laughs> and then and then I get to be there for you know, a year or more and really experience the culture, 
you know, even in the United States, you know, between D.C., Alabama and Colorado, I mean, the cultures are just vastly different. Mm. Um, I find that part really interesting. Uh, the things that you can do on a day to day basis are very different. I mean, in Alabama, we were doing campfires all the time. I mean, like oh. seeing how high we could build campfires with like 16 to 19 pallets, something. Oh, that ridiculous. sounds fun. <laughs> It would, I'll send you a video. They were really okay. crazy. I think we had a, a, a hose once because we were worried it was going to fall over, <laughs> which it did. <laughs> well, you were ready, yeah. so it's okay. <laughs> My God, it was so bad. And, you know, some guy showed up, you know, he pulled in with his lights, and we thought for sure it was the cops, you know. And so it's a bunch of adults, like, you know, um, probably when you were a kid like at a bonfire or something with a beer and you were underage like oh, sure. and they would like hide it in their jacket we all like turned away like where are you gonna run <laughs> like, <if you're laughs> stop, you are not going anywhere you were an adult with a very large fire <laughs> you are in trouble and uh anyway so that was, it was really funny but everybody was safe and nothing burned down and it's a wet season, you know. Oh yeah, those are everybody out here is worried. <laughs> but it was Alabama, you know. It's what you do when you live at a campground is you see what kind of mischief you can get into at bonfires. Oh, that sounds awesome. Yeah, it does but, remind me of my youth a little bit. We used to do that too. Yeah. There's a lot of bonfires, and I'm from upstate New York, so the you know a lot of people think of New York State and they think oh oh you know like the suburbs of New York City. I was like oh I'm like five mm -hmm. hours. <laughs> city um and so you know we spend a lot of time as kids doing like bonfires and getting into mischief and stuff like that mm. uh you know near cornfields and yep late whatever small yeah. town -ism. oh yes i remember yeah we used to gosh because we have like quite a few camping sites we'd go to campsites and stuff and just like yeah get really drunk and like get naked and like run around i'm not kidding we, we used to do that <laughs> and like uh, and skinny dipping and stuff because we were like at yeah. Snow Island. So there's lots of beaches and we used to have like beach parties. So there'd be like maybe a hundred or so kids like on the beach all getting drunk and like setting fires and, and things like that. And uh, how did you survive? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I went to one party and a kid got hit in the face with a mini keg. Oh, I <laughs> he was totally that. fine, but like man. <laughs> We I we went through an era and the kids used to like headbutt each other. They're like, oh, let's oh. headbutt each other, to see who gets knocked out. You know, <laughs> inevitably, inevitably somebody's gonna come away from a gash and I, with a gash and you know go to the hospital and have to get stitches. And I'm, yeah. I'm pretty certain that happened one night. But like, you know, like headbutting, what are you doing? Or then, and then idea. I remember there was another one. They would like, oh, let's build the bonfire and see if you can jump over it. <laughs> <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> oh, it just sounds fun. It's, it's, that's what they do. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But, I mean, like, to be fair, to be perfectly honest, I'm 30. I just turned 30 this year, and I went out drinking with some students. We went hiking, and then we were really drunk afterwards, and one of the students is a bodyguard. And I was just like, and I was like, oh, oh, oh I'm going to try to knock you down. <laughs> and so, like, I'm in the subway. We're all in the subway station going home, and we're still drunk and stuff, of course. And then, so, like, I just, like, I was, like, stand right there, and I, I, like, took a couple steps back, then I started, like, running at him, and I just, like, full body checked him, and then, of course, I was on the floor, because he's, like, a man in a bodyguard. <laughs> but this is, like, in the subway oh station, and I'm a 30-year-old woman, and I'm just, like, I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna get you. Yeah. <laughs> so, see, I was, when I was in Korea, I was, like, 32 or 3 mm -hmm. or 5, I can't remember, um, <laughs> But I, but I think I relived my twenties. Like I, yeah. I just I, I took a decade to the left and was like, this is great, <laughs> and I was totally fine with it. Like yeah. I don't know, it, and because I felt safer and I could be silly and myself, mm. and um, and I, I really loved it. You yeah. know, and and I don't. I see. I'm gonna be. How old am I gonna be? I think I'm 37. It feel um maybe more like 27. I still want to go out and like have a good time and try new cocktails and yeah, I agree. Adulting is whatever. So final question. So what would your yeah. travel advice be for any woman or person in general, but women especially setting out for the first time? So it's kind of like their first solo trip or their first like big trip somewhere. So what kind of advice would you give them? 
I would say expect the unexpected. Uh, and the reason for that is there are things that you can plan for, but mm. there's always going to be something that you cannot. And so it's it's all in your attitude and your ability to roll with the punches it is what's going to make that trip wonderful or not. Mm. And there, you know, I have I have tons of examples and I, and I actually thought about um, one day kind of capturing these in some short stories from my friends, but like, you know, your misadventures, because some of the misadventures that we have are the most memorable experiences mm. and the craziest and the silliest and the, and, and the funnest to look back on. And, and there was, um, I had an example, not mine, but when I was in Indonesia, I went scuba diving and mm-hmm. we, <laughs> The girl that we were diving with had a broken arm, and I was like, "Oh, my oh God, wow! Like, what happened to you? How can you dive with a broken arm? You know, she had it in a cast and everything." Uh-huh. And uh, she was in Bali like the week or two before, yeah, yeah. And she went she went horseback riding, right? Oh, and she was on this like six month or one year like sabbatical from work, and she was just doing all this like crazy traveling, um, and, and so. Well, let me just say the dive trip that we were on, it was all women. Oh, cool. All. Nice. There was one woman who brought her husband, and that was, oh. he was the only dude. <laughs> <laughs> there was the master diver, I think, was a dude. And then uh, we had, a, like, a you know, a couple of guys that were doing the oxygen tanks. But, I mean, mm. every diver, with the exception of one, was uh, was a woman. And that's where I, you know, I met my friend that I ended up visiting in Singapore. And it was oh. an awesome experience. Cool. But anyway, so this one woman, she breaks her arm while horseback riding and she ends up in the hospital and, um, you know, they re- the guy resets her arm and, you know, he feels so bad about her experience in Bali being, you know, less than, you know, not not the full Bali experience. She broke her arm. This is terrible. So he decides that he's going to invite hit her over to his family's home oh. for like dinner and then takes her on a scooter ride all around the island. This is her doctor, right? You know? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> yeah. And so, like, she got this, like, wonderfully royal treatment, um, it, you know, when she saw the real side of Indonesia, right? Not the right. not the tourist side, but the real deal. Yeah, um, yeah. Real people and... You know, you know, when we think of doctors, sometimes I think we think of, you know, people living in like big mansions and stuff like that. And I, I think that probably changes as you get older because you, you mm. realize what, what adulting looks like for doctors as much as it does the average Joe. True. <laughs> but I mean, she said that, you know, he was, he was living, you know, very simply, uh, you know, like a one room home and, uh, but they were just all too, they were so interested in, giving back and making sure that she had a wonderful experience in memory of Bali. Mm-hmm. And, and I was like, you know, the, the misadventure she had was, you know, breaking her arm, but look what it led to. Look at, yeah. look at the, the wonderful story she's able to tell in the different side of Indonesia. You know, it wasn't just a regular Bali trip to some resort. She really saw it for, for what it mm-hmm. was and, and something different in, in the people. You know, and, and, and I had that too. Um, even when I was like 18, I don't know why my mom let me do this. I traveled to, um, to France when I was like, yeah, I think I was like 18. Oh yeah. So I went to study abroad, but anyway, uh-huh. so I was like traveling around Europe at like 18 and then again Fun. at like 20. Yeah. Uh, but I, I also didn't plan much then. And that was like pre cell phones. You know, that was like you had to like look on a map where you were going and then like like remember the route. Um, mm-hmm. you know, that was before GPS and, and Google Maps even, all that kind of stuff. Anyway, so I ended up going like making my way to this hostel and they had no rooms left. Oh no. <laughs> and and she the, they said they only had rooms on the boys side, but they couldn't let me stay there. It would wouldn't be fair for safety. And I was mm-hmm. like, Oh, whatever, who cares? And they still wouldn't let me do it, but it turns out I was, um, I didn't have any place else to go and it was like after midnight. So I just drank, uh, drank and smoked with the guy that was running the hostel. Oh. And we just had, we had a great conversation and, um, a couple hours into us just like shooting the crap, 
hanging out. Uh, there was a, a woman and her husband who, who showed up and they didn't have a place to stay either, but they decided to stay on the boys side. And since it was a four bunk room and it was the two of them, they let me stay with them. Oh, and so, nice. so like I met these wonderful people along the way, but you know, it was like a happy accident. If I had just, you know, stayed on the girl side, maybe I wouldn't have made like new friends or, you know, gotten to learn a little bit about what it's like to run a hostel in the yeah. middle of Paris. <laughs> so, you know, I, I like the the misadventures of it all. And so I'm always expecting the unexpected, mm. kind of do it to myself the way I wander. But having a, a good attitude about the way things happen will allow more opportunity to, you know, open up as you go. So even even if it wasn't what you were planning on, it might be something even better. Yeah, I think I think attitude really goes a long way because even even like you were saying, so our friend got Raina got stuck in the Philippines, but she was pretty like I mean it was a stressful situation, but she remained positive about it, and oh, she yeah, had, and she had like really good experiences and met really wonderful people, and but at the same time that she was stuck in the Philippines, like another a different friend of mine was also stuck in the Philippines, but she was so. And I mean, like, again, like, it's, it is a tough experience. So I, I understand, like, why she reacted that way, but it was just kind of like totally opposite reactions. And she was like yeah. complaining about it every day. And she was like really upset and really awful. So I like, you know, I was looking at her really negative posts and then I'm looking over at Raina's and she's like, I'm going swimming today. <laughs> and, and honestly, I, I actually interviewed Raina and, mm. and asked her like her whole, like her whole story and stuff like that. And, and yeah. it's, Honestly, it's, it's super fascinating because the, the cops were cracking down. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it could have been really terrible. And, and there were some moments where she was like, this was a really negative thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> we almost got ourselves in trouble. Yep. Um, but like, but they survived it. And yeah. I, I mean, yeah, it, it is really all about attitude, but it, mm-hmm. it there's, there's always going to be something that, no matter how well you plan your itinerary, it just gets totally jacked up. So and true. I think it's easy for me because I don't have an itinerary. <laughs> but yes. at the same time, even if you're an itinerary person, just be ready to roll with the punches because it might present something better than you expected. That's really good advice. And I, I definitely would echo that. But anyway, I think that's about all we have for today. So thank you so much for coming on the show. It's nice to see you again. It's been a really long time. I know. And I love your show. I think you guys oh. are doing wonderful things. I'm Thank hoping you. that the Mongol rally goes on this year. And uh, this is uh, something I've added to my bucket list and it is because of you. So oh. thank you for inspiring me to add yeah. more things to my bucket list. <laughs> You're very welcome. And then, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a really cool thing to do. And I think, you know, most, more people should do it. More people, more women should do it. Yeah. Especially yeah. get out there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so uh, thank you. And thanks our listeners for tuning in again today uh, and for your continued support. If you like this episode, please comment, like subscribe, follow or whatever on whatever platform you're listening to this episode on. And if you'd like to support us further, please consider becoming one of our patrons. All revenue will be donated to the charities Cool Earth and the Center for Reproductive Rights. Link in the description. So thank you and see you around. See you again. Whoop, whoop. I hope so so soon. (laughs) I hope so soon. Okay, so goodbye. Bye. That's it for today, folks. Thanks so much for tuning in. And as always, please support this work by subscribing and donating to our cause at www.teamgetoveryit.com. Donors get access to specific content like stickers, t-shirts, and postcards from our journey. You can donate for as little as $5 and the benefits build from there. Go to our website for more info or find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Team Get Over It. Thanks for listening and catch us next time on Get Over It.